Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and it's this week's episode of On the Tube, where I talk about all the television series that I've been watching over the past week. And I got to the point where I finished a couple of Quibi shows, so I'm going to be talking about some of those. A couple of season finales wrapped up this week, and as well as some new shows from Hulu and Netflix. So I'm going to first talk about The Stranger on Quibi. And this is definitely anchored by a very game performance from Dane DeHaan, who plays this man who's very intense, chasing after this young woman. And it's very much about like Me Too movement and this man being a sociopath, really hunting based off of that. And like... It's really on the nose in terms of its messaging and its themes, but it delivers enough thrills and engaging sequences that keeps you on edge. And there's a lot of twists and turns in the story, and Micah Monroe, who is a very talented young actress, really carries the show very well. And I was definitely interested in seeing how it all played out. I wasn't the most engaged in terms of like an emotional connection to the characters because not gonna lie they're pretty flat there's not a whole lot to these characters but the situation you're in the twists and turns of the story kept me engaged enough and if you're going to be taking advantage of the free trial on Quibi go check out The Stranger then I watched Never Have I Ever from Netflix and this is a new coming of age show and I really really love this show it was great and I definitely want to give a lot of credit to the young actress who leads this show Maitri Ramakrishnan because she's absolutely fantastic she has a lot of charisma she has great chemistry with the rest of the class, uh, cast she's funny she's charming and she's awkward, and you really feel for her, and there's a lot of going a lot going on in terms of some heavy baggage, including the death of her father, who the actor who played her father was great. I absolutely loved his character in those different flashback sequences. And this relationship who she, what she has with her mother, played by Porna Jonathan, she's great too. And their relationship is complex, it's tense. Throw in her cousin, who's a lot of fun, and she brings some interesting dynamics. It brings a lot of layers and a lot of different fun characters to the show. And there's a lot of balancing going on, but I really cared about these characters. I enjoyed these characters, and I enjoyed each of their different kinds of tough situations that they're going through. And... I really fell for them, and this is a really charming show. I really enjoyed it. I burned through it because, like, I was just really enjoying the show. I wanted to finish it, and I really recommend Never Have I Ever on Netflix. So the first season of Breeders finished up, FX show on Hulu, and this show has some dark humor in it. And Martin Freeman is a live wire, and he, is like, steals the show. He's the main character in this. But the whole cast, the kids, his his wife, his life partner who he has these kids with, his parents, her parents, everyone's so interesting and quirky and has each of their little things. And I love how the episodes are really about these awkwardness, awkward situations of being parents. And it's never cleaned up nicely like a lot of sitcoms. And there's a lot more heart and depth to this. It hits some really strong emotional beats throughout the show. And it really climaxes to the point where it's like, it leaves the door open for a second season with even more intriguing places to go with it. And I absolutely love this show. I was hooked. This was something I look forward to every week watching Breeders. So I'm definitely going to be checking it out when it comes back for a second season, hopefully. But I highly recommend checking out Breeders. I watched the first season of The Sopranos, so this was a big thing for me. I'd never watched The Sopranos before, and this, I can see why a lot of people consider this the best show, one of the greatest shows of all time. There's so much depth to all these characters, there's complexities. Tony Soprano is such an interesting character because he 
doesn't always fall into that stereotypical mafioso. He deals with his depression and goes to see a shrink. Shrink. And their relationship, their dynamic so interesting, his dy dynamic with his wife. I've had people, including my brother, who absolutely hate Carmella, and I'm like, I actually really liked her. I thought she was an interesting character in this. The kids, they have their moments as well, but you have Michael Imperioli, and his, God, I hate Tony Soprano's mother. Oh my God. I hate that character so much, but like in a way where it's like, it's a good thing because it really challenges you as an audience member to try to process that complex relationship with his mother. And then his uncle Junior. It's just so many great characters with so many great stories, even just episode focused stories throughout the trip to college, going on college visits with his daughter and the little subplot that goes along with that, and building all the way up to what's going on now that his uncle takes over as the boss and the FBI gets involved, who's ratting on who, there's so much complexities to the story and even more complexities to the character of Tony Soprano and I'm just hooked. I love the first season, I've heard great buzz, my post on Instagram got blown up and I've heard a lot of great things that it just keeps getting better which makes me even more excited. 50 States of Fright from Quibi I'm really excited about this show coming from Sam Raimi with these anthology horror sh and thriller episodes focusing on different parts of the country, especially the first one, The Golden Arm, directed by Sam Raimi. And no, oh, it felt like a Sam Raimi story and how it was shot and directed and I absolutely loved it. Some of them I enjoyed more than others. Some of them it took me until the very last piece to be grabbed and it says like, oh, I see that completely differently now. So I'm a little more throwaway and a little less compelling, but in general, all of them are fun, engaging, and creepy genre stories. And I look forward to seeing even more of them, hopefully when we see more of the next season with some of the other stories. Hashtag free Ray Sean on Quibi. This is some of the best acting I've seen Lawrence Fishburne do in a long time, and it made me so excited. He was fantastic in this show, Stephen James was great, and this dynamic, it could get a little on the nose, and it didn't do a whole lot of new things in terms of this growing genre of films focusing on police brutality and bias towards people of color. And overall, this is a really intense show, it's a powerful show with powerful performances, and that's enough to get past where this kind of story is starting to feel a little tired, because, but the thing is, it's important. And that's the most, that is the most important thing, is that it's shining a light on this, and it's a really intense story with a lot to say. And definitely, if you have, if you're checking out Quibi, check out hashtag free Ray Sean. And then I also finished up Dummy, season one on Quibi, starring Anna Kendrick, who seems to be the person to go to when you're launching a streaming site, seeing as she had her movie for Disney+, Plus. she's going to have a new show on HBO Max at launch, and now this. And it's such a strange, quirky, weird dynamic. I enjoyed Dummy. It was definitely a out there kind of premise with Anna Kendrick playing a aspiring writer, dating a writer... Dan Harmon. I'm assuming he was in on this joke because she's dating the writer of Rick and Morty, apparently played by Donald Logue, and she befriends his sex doll. And it's a very interesting dynamic between the two of them because it progresses. It feels a little rushed in terms of their progression of where they are as friends because like these episodes are so short that you forget like this isn't like a couple 30 minute episodes that build up to something it's a couple of like six minute episodes and it's just like oh now we're friends but it's crazy it's weird and it's out there and it's a good in a good way enough to enjoy this and really those are my thoughts on dummy i think it's funny i had a good time with it anna kendrick i love she's really charismatic and i enjoy hearing just about anything so that got me enough to be enjoying dummy not a strong recommendation, but if you have Quibi, why not check it out? See what you think. 
normal people. My God, this show on Hulu floored me. I was hooked emotionally into these two young people's lives and their relationship and this roller coaster of emotions of like I very rarely get into it where I'm like talking to a show but I was talking to a show watching this because I'm just like they're f you want I wanted them to be together so bad and at every turn when they don't get back together or it doesn't work out I just felt like my heart was ripped out and the performances in Normal People are great. The story has plenty of ups and downs, twists and turns in their relationship. And it's 13 episodes. After a while, it can get a little like, oh my god, are they at something going to get resolved between the two of them? But it's interesting because how the story jumps in time. It's not like every couple of weeks they get back together or not. It's interesting to see them, these characters grow through adult life. And where their relationship goes and it's intimate it's passionate and i absolutely love normal people this is one of the best dra straight drama shows that i've seen in a long time this is a very strong recommendation and then hollywood from netflix and ryan murphy and i have to say the first episode really sets this up as like focusing on this one person and there's some side characters and then there's only seven episodes of this and then bam the second episode just opens the floodgates and you have all these characters trying to keep track of everybody and all their motivations all their arcs and it just feels a little messy and convoluted at times but i really enjoyed these characters and the performances there's some great actors in this the one that really got me was Dylan McDermott, who plays the uh, owner and proprietor of a gas station where they service their clientele, not just their cars. And he is dashing and charming, and I just love every moment. Jim Parsons steals a lot of scenes with his weird, offbeat, creepy manager. And a lot of young actors in this, Darren Chris, and a lot of other young up-and-coming actors and actresses really steal the show. Samara Weaving's in this. And, of course, Rob Reiner! And have some fun with him. But the real heart of this, there's a lot of heart. It could be really on the nose in terms of the themes of racial issues and homophobia, but the heart of this really kept me invested. And I enjoy the story. I love movies, and I love Golden Age Hollywood, and I love about making movies and I might be a little biased if you're not that passionate in terms of film you might not get as much out of this as I might have but in general I enjoyed this and I think it's enough to recommend that I enjoyed it there's a jam-packed week of television for you on the tube so let me know what you think comment below about any of the shows I talked about today and let's talk some television because I'm all about that pop culture and hey Leave some comments below for some questions because I mentioned this last week. I'm thinking about doing Beyond the Wasteland. So if you have any questions that you want me to talk or topics that aren't movie or TV related, leave them in the comments. Let's do some new things. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland reviewer.